if you have something very, very specific that you want to do, one of the other things that's really powerful and beneficial is to look and say, what are other ways that I could express that? So you might think, you know what, I want to write a novel. But is a screenplay another way of doing that that could interest you? Welcome to Tapping Creativity, a podcast for the creative community. Yes, it's a podcast for you. Whether you're looking for insight, inspiration, or community, you found yourself in the right place. My name is Matthew Temple. I am the host. And on this podcast, we go into questions, inspirations, challenges of the creative process. There, it's about connecting with other artists, hearing what other people are struggling with, their wins, their challenges. If you like what you hear, make sure you subscribe, follow, share. If you really like what you hear, give us a thumbs up or give us some kind of review. And with that, let's hop into this week's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Tapping Creativity, as we're going to dive into the second P for powerful and effective creating. Now, this entire podcast is dedicated to creativity and the creative process. However, we are right now still in the early stages of a section where we are going to be diving into the creative process as it relates to us and our, our own journey, and actually uh, either examining our our creative process, what works for us, what hasn't, what can we uh, sort of do to review or build something that is more sustainable, perhaps more fulfilling. Now, you may be someone who is incredibly prolific, in which case some of the setting goals or figuring out how to uh, get into practice might not be your challenge. Your challenge could be, I do a lot, but I'm not fulfilled in a certain way. Or it could be taking all the way to completion. It could be being patient or delicate with yourself. You know, it's not uncommon for people who are very prolific to also get burnout or just feel like, oh my gosh, I need to take a break for myself. You know, there can be a, becomes a disconnect between the creative's journey and the sort of personal growth journey. And very often, I mean, those things are deeply, deeply intertwined, but we know that there are times where the stress of getting stuff done can be overwhelming. And then there are other times it's the stress of, I really want to get something done and I'm not can also be overwhelming. So there's really a place for all people who are dealing with the creativity to really gain a lot from this little mini section that we are doing here on Tapping Creativity. Uh, today we're going into the second P of powerful and effective creating, which is your project. If you're just tuning in and you missed last week's, last week's was the first P, which is purpose. What is the purpose for our work? What drives us? And you know, the week before was an introduction to this whole process. So feel free to continue listening if you haven't listened to those two parts, or if you'd like to stop or pause and kind of go get caught up, feel free, whatever works for you. Now, before I go on, I want to say that when we're doing our creative work, we're doing it for us, we're doing it for the world. It's this interplay, this balance. There's some selfishness to it, or maybe selfish is the wrong word, but care for myself. And then there is also that care for the rest of the world. And it's in that balance and in that ellipsis, as it were, in that figure eight of going back and forth where uh, we can feel fulfilled, where we can also be producing quality work, quality content. So usually at the beginning of every year or at the end of every year, I do what I call the brain dump. And I might have stolen that from David Allen, that, that idea or that, that phrasing. I don't remember exactly. But the brain dump is this time where, you know, I just kind of like, what are all the things that I've been thinking about doing over the last year, my life, whatever? And I, can, I have a lot of fun with it because, you know, if you're like me, you've probably had a million ideas. Now, we can't uh, execute on a million ideas. We can really execute on, well, certainly one at a time, but our time is limited. That's one thing that time gives us. It gives us a certain amount of constraints. There's 24 hours in a day. Uh, some of that is taken up with sleeping and some with eating and taking showers, uh, all the other th responsibilities and obligations that we have in our lives. And so there's all the, there's more ideas than we're ever going to be able to follow through with. But going through this process of kind of a brain dump is really, 
really fun. And what I'll do is I'll kind of write things out and I'll just throw it up on the wall. And just to begin to see, like, what are all of those things? And, and usually all but one or two of them get filed or forgotten or burnt at some point. I don't actually burn them. I do save them. And we'll kind of go into that later. I can't do all of it. So like, for example, actually, I'm going to kind of look here. I actually have a list. So probably about four or five years ago, something like this, this was a, a list that I had. So I wanted to write a feature length script of Animal Cookies, which is based on a short film I made with my daughters. I wanted to finish the manuscript for the picture book of uh, that short film. I wanted to launch my podcast. I wanted to make a short film of a a play that was written actually for me. And I also wanted to shoot a short film based on the story from Seven Arrows, Jumping Mouse. Then I think I also put on here, I wanted to write 52 blog entries. Then there were things sort of like this, but you can sort of wear it when whatever neat, uh, whatever niche you're in or whatever sort of is supporting work. So one could be securing a publisher for a book, sending a demo tape to 20 record labels, assemble uh, an, all of my old poetry for an ebook, enroll in an art class. So these are some things that become, those just kind of to get some ideas going. So if you're driving, if you're not in a place at this moment to do this, you can begin to think about this and then set some time. Again, I will have a worksheet in the show notes. Um, but the brain dump is basically just that. Um, so if you are in a place where you can listen, I'm just going to kind of read some of these questions that are on the, uh, that are on the worksheet. And then you can also, you know, later either kind of print it out or pull out your journal, wherever you do, wherever you do this. But some things to think about in that brain dump would be uh, what were the ideas or a specific idea that made me like, listen, like, why are you still here? If you purchased a copy of the Creatives Handbook, why did you buy it? If you are spending your valuable minutes right here, why are you listening? What is the thing that says, this is what I really want to do? You know, for me, one year it was write through my creative memoir, The Process of Becoming, and starting my blog, Dude Let's Talk, and making a short film about animals, uh, cookie, animal cookies that come to life. Then the second one would be other ways to express that idea. And this one is really fun because... If you have something very, very specific that you want to do, one of the other things that's really powerful and beneficial is to look and say, what are other ways that I could express that? Okay, so you might think, you know what, I wanna write a novel, but is a screenplay another way of doing that that could interest you? Or what about a serialized audio book slash podcast? You know, what about a video essay? What about an expressive interpretive dance based on that concept. There's like any ways we can do it. I'm being a little facetious in that, but also not completely to sort of really expand. So actually when I, before I started the blog, Dude Let's Talk, I thought, you know, I want to do a documentary about men's work uh, and sort of this question around masculinity in our time today. Well, eventually I was like, you know what? I don't know if I'm ready yet for that. I don't even know if that's the right way to do it. So instead of making a documentary, I started a blog and launched a website. That was a better way to express that particular idea, that particular uh, sort of creative output that I wanted to engage in. So those can be really great ways of doing it, right? Is it uh, an album of songs instead of a dance performance if you're a dancer? If you're an artist, is it a sketchbook? Is it a, a show for a gallery? W what other ways could you express that? And then this one's also really fun, which is other ideas that excite me or something I might just want to do someday. You know, I'd love to maybe do a do film, to film a docu-series, launch an app, could be something. Uh, you may want to start a podcast, not anytime real soon, but maybe sometime in the future, a YouTube channel, whatever, some, some days. And then lastly, this question of if I could live 10 lives simultaneously, slash if money wasn't an object, what kind of things would I do creatively? For me, one would be uh, opening a restaurant, uh, something I would absolutely love to do, probably will never do it. Uh, starting an arts organization in Africa, big place, probably Kenya more specifically. And another example might be writing a feature screenplay based on my grandmother's life or, you know, whatever that happens to be, whatever all those kind of other crazy ideas that you might have. One reason to become really clear and actually go through this exercise. Now, like I said, there's a pretty good chance that you don't actually need this exercise. 
you have an idea of something that you want to do. But by writing it all down, you get to sort of put it on the wall and live with it just for a little while because you can't do all of that. So I worked with, again, with someone once when we had our first meeting. I was like, okay, so what is the project that has brought you to me? You're investing your time and your money and we're working together. What do you want to get? And just give me a list probably of over a dozen things. And this person was a single mother who was working, you know, had a job, had no time. And all of these different ideas, these things that I want to do were so massive that she couldn't do any of them. So we said, okay, great. We're going to, these are all these 12 things. We're going to write them down and which is on that worksheet or what I, we were just going through, write it down and put it on the wall and live with it for a little while right? What are all the projects that I really want to do? What are those other ways of expressing it? What are things that I might want to do someday? We're, these are all just to put it out and just live with it. Because if you're going to be engaging in any creative project, you are living with this for a long time. It's not like just going to see a movie and you spend two hours and you're like, well, that wasn't great. I wasted, you know, 15 bucks and, you know, two hours of my life, whatever. Okay. That's not what this is. This is an engagement. You are engaging your life forces with this project. If it's something that is, you know, that's not fulfilling, it's not going to keep working. So it's being really clear on that. Okay. If you are really clear and you've done this and then in three or four months, you've been working on it. Uh, and let's say you're getting up every, say, you know what, I'm going to be getting up three times a week at five 30 in the morning. So I can write for an hour and a half before I do my next thing. Now, after three or four months, if you get to a place where you say, you know what, this is terrible, or I don't like this, or it's not really what I was wanting to be doing after all, that can be disheartening. But if you had actually really went through this and you were really clear on why, as we talked about last week, and what you're doing, and it ends up not being quite right, you're not going to kick yourself and feel like I wasted my time. Because in that case, now the time that you spent was actually part of your iteration, part of how you get to a good pivot moment. Okay, you're going to get to get to that moment and say, you know what, this wasn't quite right. That's okay. We do that all the time. You know, everybody's every creative person has a computer or, or uh, notebooks or sketch pads or whatever that is full of stuff that just at the end of the day wasn't quite good enough or you've kind of fell out of love with it or whatever that particular story is. So that's okay. But it can be really hard. You might even get a year into it and be like, Oh, I did, this isn't quite right. I was writing, I was writing a screenplay, but I don't have the connections I need to sell my screenplay. I don't think I'm quite a good enough screenplay writer. I need to take the same concept and turn it into a, a novel or into a audio podcast series. Now, that's perfectly okay. If you went through all this and you know what, if a year ago, I really want to write a script and then you get down the road and say, you know what? Not quite. That, like I said, can be very disheartening unless you went through this process and then you say, you know what? At least I understand myself better. I understand screenwriting better. I, I understand my characters and my story better. And now it's just simply time for me to refocus and repivot. And that becomes okay. So that's the real that's one of the really important things. And then it's also to kind of winnow out. You're going to spend probably, I'm going to say when we get to the section in goals and milestones and all that, that you know, if this is a, a, there's a very good chance that your project is going to take minimum nine months to a year. It shouldn't, you know, whatever your goal is, if it's going to be, we'll talk about this later, but if it's going to be more than a year, then you probably need to break it down into something that's a little bit more bite-sized, something that's within the realm of what you can do within a year. Now, in general, I suggest don't rush this particular section. It's okay to write the stuff out, put it on the wall and sit with it, live with it for a few days. If it doesn't feel quite right after a few days, you can pull it off the wall, do the exercise again and hang it back up on the wall. You want to live with this. You want it to be looking at you. It's going to stare at you from the wall being like, Hey, which is really the, the piece that is drawing me? What is that thing? Or like I said, at the very least, it is the time and the consideration of all the other ways that I could be expressing this. And now I'm no longer expressing it in this way. So if this could all be summed up in one piece is that Howard Thurman once very famously said, 
Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. So do that. Let's get what that is. Let's figure out this thing. Because we are, over the course of the next several weeks, going to be engaging in this process together on this project. So we're going to be putting this time in. Let's, let's have it be something that makes us come alive. So reviewing going back to last week in the purpose, why we're doing this, and then what it is we're doing. That way, when we get to the next episode, we can really begin to lay the pieces together to build up the foundational structures that we can use to really support us in our creative endeavors. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, always make sure to reach out Matthew at MatthewCTemple.com. If you're not following me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, at MatthewCTemple.com is where you can, excuse me, at MatthewCTemple is where you can find me. Um... And with that, I wish you a wonderful couple of weeks of creative insight and work. See you next time. Tapping Creativity is brought to you in part by We Strive, a nonprofit organization that works to lead the world towards stronger, healthier, and more sustainable community. We Strive is currently at an exciting juncture in that coming out of the pandemic, it is in a place of looking to see how can it now, as a established organization, be of greatest support to the creative communities as well as communities who are striving in any way they know how to engage in co-creating a better world. If you're interested in learning more, visit WeStrive.org.